Hey everybody, this is Freddie with LeviathanScuba.com. You know, I see a lot of videos out there that teach people the proper way of cleaning a mask and they make huge mistakes. I'm going to show you the right way. We'll get to that in just a minute. You know, I do worry a little bit about kind of contradicting others that are on the internet that are out there, but sometimes I think to do the best thing for you, I have no choice, and this is one of those areas. Um, I'm going to show you the proper way of cleaning a mask, and it's going to make a few people out there that are making videos a little upset with me, and I'm sorry for that, but I got to do the right thing. I got to show you the right thing. So I'm going to start with probably the most serious mistake I see out there. And, you know, a mask, they're not cheap. They're fairly expensive these days. And there are some things that are being taught out there that can ruin a mask. And I don't want that to happen to you, okay? I like to start out and kind of tease a little bit and say, you buy a mask right out of the box, it won't work. What do I mean by that? When a mask is manufactured, a modern mask, the lens is cut. It's tempered glass and it's cut at the factory. And they have a lubricant on the glass. They never clean it off. And that lubricant dries kind of hard, right? Some use silicone, some use other materials, but the point is they leave it on the glass and then it dries. And it's on there. You can't see it, it's invisible, but it's on there and it needs to come off because your defog won't stick to the lens, therefore it won't work and your mask will fog up terribly. You could buy the most expensive mask out there thinking that's the highest quality. Put your defog in there, jump in the water and it'll fog up on you just like that. So you have to get that material off of there and it's very stubborn. It's not a very easy thing to just take off the first time. But once you take it off, it's not coming back on, it's gone. So you really only have to do that part of it one time. So what's that thing that's the biggest mistake out there? Fire. People use fire to burn off that that layer off the lens and you'll have a lot of old timers tell you oh, i just burn it off okay i get that i get it. will it work yeah it'll take it off the glass but let me tell you where that started way back when masks were made out of vulcanized rubber vulcanized rubber was melted super high temperatures high heat much more resistant to temperature than silicone the modern mask today. So what would the old timers do? They would take their lighter and they would burn that material off of there and if they got a little close to the vulcanized rubber it didn't hurt anything. So they kept doing it and kept doing it. Well masks evolved. Now they're made out of a, a surgical grade hypoallergenic material a high-grade silicone. The problem is it has a very low melting point. And when people take that lighter and they burn, if they get too close to the edges, the silicone actually starts to shrink or it can warp and, and create kind of a lip in there. Um, the, the, it's just not meant to do, so I ask people, don't do it. Now, I know there's going to be some people out there that say, I've been doing it. I've done it on a silicone mask. I get it. I know. It can work, and you can be super careful. But if you're going to avoid the edge with the flame anyway, you still need to scrub that edge, or it's going to fog forever. So why not just do it right the first time? So what does that mean, do it right? There's a, I, I get people all the time we had a guy in a pool just uh, two nights ago that said, well, I cleaned it with glass cleaner. So, so you used a product that meant to clean glass and you were cleaning glass. You think that works, but it doesn't take off that, uh, that first layer of silicone or the lubricant that dried hard. It just doesn't work. So don't, don't use window cleaner, okay? Uh, you want something mildly abrasive, okay? unless you have a mask that is a mirrored finish. I don't know if I can show that this one has the mirrored finish on it, but it's called the Ray Blocker and it has a little bit almost like a mirrored sunglass. You don't want to use an abrasive material on there. Okay, so no kitchen scrubbers, definitely no harsh chemicals like bleach, ammonia, things like that. Probably the most common one that is touted out there is toothpaste. Will it work? 
Absolutely, it works. However, let me tell you why you don't want to use toothpaste either. So, modern mask. The, the skirt is molded to the lens, okay? It's not clamped on like the old masks that had a metal frame and things like that. Some of them still have frames, but the skirt in the manufacturing process is molded to the lens. So what that means is the seal isn't glued. It's a result of how tightly the silicone grips the lens inside of it, okay? So now you've got toothpaste, You've got it on a rag or your finger or something, and you're in there and you're kind of <clears throat> digging, scrubbing a little bit, trying to get that toothpaste to scratch off that thin layer, and you're actually pushing a little bit of it underneath the rubber skirt, I mean, the silicone skirt, okay? You're pushing it right underneath in that seal. You're not getting it back out. I've tried, it's a pain. I've used toothpicks, little needles, trying to dig it out of there. So once it gets in there and then it dries, you get this little white ring all the way around. Oh, that's unsightly, but it's not that bad, is it? Well, wherever you see this soap from soaps that you try to use, baby shampoo, dish soap, uh, toothpaste, wherever you see that little white ring is actually a place where the silicone is not touching the glass lens. It's touching the, the layer of soap that got in there and dried. So let me say this, all of that, why? to save six bucks on a product that's actually manufactured and made for modern silicone skirts. Spend the six bucks, do it the right way. I know I'll get that person that makes the comment, he just wants to sell you something. Well, I do want to sell you something, but I also want you to do it the right way. The, the less hassle you have with your mask, the better your dive experience is going to be. Okay, so you need to get that film off of there. And I'm gonna show you, if you use the right stuff that's made for it, I'm gonna show you how, right? So you start with your mask, brand new out of the box, use a product that's made for it, something that is made for masks, scrub, buff, whatever. There's numerous products out there that are made for it. Put a healthy size drop on the inside to begin with. You can start dry or wet, it doesn't matter. Use a thin cloth. Don't use a wash rag. I don't really like using sponges either or terry cloth because it absorbs too much material. And you do want to scrub it four times. That's not etched in stone. We'll talk about it in just a minute. You also want to do the outside. Wait a minute, Freddie. The outside doesn't fog up. It's under the water. You still want to do the outside. I'll explain in a minute. You only have to do it once, but spend two to three minutes scrubbing that mask well. Then when you're finished, rinse it pretty good. The proper material comes right off. It's squeaky clean. The glass will actually squeak underneath your fingers. And you're done. Okay, so now let me talk a little bit about why four times on the inside. There's no magic number four. You can do that as many times as you want. You just want to make sure that it works all the way. What I find is when people do it, they don't, they don't dig with some effort. They don't spend enough time on it. They just kind of lightly, they think it's going to scrub off real easy, but it's stubborn. So then they get in the pool and their mask still fogs up and they go, I cleaned it just like you told me to. And I said, well, I told you four times. And the only reason I say four is because I know overkill is just enough, right? The idea is you just need to get the stuff off there. If it takes you one time, it takes you one time if you do it really, really good. Now, why the outside? The outside is underwater. There's no way it's going to fog. Well, that coating is on the outside, and so I say it needs to come off. It doesn't have to if you don't want to, but here's what's going to happen. You're going to get little scratches in that coating. And it's going to look like your glass is scratched, but it's not. So the annoyance of that is when you're in the sun, water sheeting across the, the mask, and you see what looks like little tiny lines, almost like scratches. Well, if you clean that outside layer off really good, like I say, spend about three minutes, dig a little bit, get it off there. Guess what? You don't have to mess with it anymore. You don't ever have to defog the outside. I'm just saying that so you don't see the scratches in the, the layer of uh, coating that's on there, okay? So, don't be lazy. 
<laughs> do it the four times, three times, really good, two times, exceptionally good, whatever. Now, will you ever have to clean your mask again once you've got that material off of there? Well, that material can't get back on. But when you're out there using your mask and you're diving, um, you know, believe it or not, you're sweating and there's sweat, there's oil in your sweat that gets inside the mask that gets on the lens. Your snot, you know, coming out, it has oil on it. I know, gross, right? But how about makeup, sunblock, suntan lotion, grimy little fingerprints, things like that. Oil is going to get on the lens and it's wherever it sticks to the lens, your defog won't stick. So you need to clean it again. Do you have to do it the way I just showed you? No. This is much simpler. One drop on your thumb and just rub it around the inside good. Rinse it, put your defog on and go diving. Okay? Should last you about 20 to 25 dives before you'll have to clean it again. Okay? So that's how to clean a mask. How about storing your mask longer term? You're done with your dive trip, you come home. I'm going to say clean the lens really good before you store it. And then get yourself a product meant for cleaning silicone or skirts. And a lot of products have dual uses. So BC cleaners, wetsuit cleaners, things like that. They can work really well on a mask. And then we, I use dry suit seal conditioner because I condition my seals on my dry suit before I put it away. But it's really um, food grade silicone in the bottle. And you can buy little bottles of food grade silicone. And so I put it on a cotton ball. I put a little bit on the skirt, you know, rub it around the skirt, inside, outside. If I get a little on the lens, that's okay. Then, I, then you put it in your mask box and you store it in a conditioned space so you don't have the extreme temperatures, you know, depending on where you live. So cool, dry location. Pull it out next year. You're going to clean it before you go diving anyway. Then you're ready to rip. I hope this has uh, cleared up some of the misconceptions. I hope it didn't make anybody mad out there that burns theirs or something like that. You know, they, they do it in a way that's not really meant for modern day masks. Okay. Make it a great day. You know, the difference between a new diver and experienced divers, quite often the tips and the tricks they learn along the way. That's why we share these things with you. We hope that it helped you in some way. And you know, you can help us if you'll just hit that like button down below. And if you can think of anybody else that might benefit from these, why don't you try sharing it? That'll help get the word out. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and we'll let you know when the next one comes out. Have an awesome day.